So yesterday evening, I had the pleasure of seeing Jujutsu Kaisen's Volume Zero movie, and it goes without saying that this is one of the best shonen movies for the books. As a weekly reader and have read Volume Zero as well, this is without a doubt a concrete adaptation and a beautiful one both of animation and quality. Now before I get into things, this video will have spoilers, so if you are anime only and have not seen the movie, please click off and come back to this video afterwards to protect your viewing pleasure. As usual, kicking off my rating for the movie, this is the first time in a long time that I'm giving an anime movie a full 10 out of 10. Volume Zero is an above and beyond adaptation presented by Studio Mappa diving into the origin of Okotsu Yuta, Suguru Geto, and the twisted curse of Rika while also including some of our many favorites from the main series with new content and new questions being raised. Yuta played by the well-known Megumi Ogata who was also the voice of Ikari Shinji from the Evangelion series was an absolute treat. The range of despair, finding that reason to live, and the desire to protect his friends was portrayed perfectly throughout the entirety of the movie. Movie. Yuta is a perfect example of what Megumi describes as a Jutsu sorcerers not being heroes but people who aim to do the right thing. Taking Gojo's advice to control his curse and using it to help people showed us why Yuta is worth all the hype. I really enjoy how the movie took its time giving you plenty of backstory and insight into the character. Establishing the relationship with Rika as a child, how she was cursed, and how that curse turned out to be one of his greatest strengths. Of course, tagging alongside Yuta, we get Maki, Panda, and Inumaki who is teaching Yuta how to survive in the Jujutsu world. Maki and Yuta really have the best developed relationship throughout the entirety of the movie. What started all rocky due to his lack of confidence grew into a pretty fine friendship and potential romance ship for later down the line. Maki also had some really nice revisiting into the issues with the Zenin clan and just how terrible her lack of cursed energy issue exactly is. These two without a doubt will grow into one of the best dynamics in the series especially as the manga rages on. Gojo of course is still Gojo, though this time he doesn't have his fancy blindfold from season 1 one, but the bandages, but still looking a total badass. I don't think I need to spend too much time talking about the different missions that Yuta went on throughout the film. They looked great, they flowed great, and served as a visual presentation to show Yuta's combat growth and relationship with the others developed. I don't think anybody will have a single complaint about the quality of this movie. The art, animation, and OSTs were all organized to perfection. One of my favorite OSTs was actually in the beginning titled Greatest Strength, and it is certainly one heck of a song to open up the movie. The talk of the movie really lies in the middle to final act of the movie with the introduction of Ghetto. Obviously in this movie he is still the original Ghetto with the lack of stitches around his head signifying pre-Kenjaku takeover. The movie had a lot of great moments diving into the dicey relationship between Gojo and Ghetto and giving plenty of nods to the Star Plasma arc. One arc that I'm sure many anime only people will appreciate that also fills the void of context and information into exactly what happened in the past that led to this split and leading into the introduction of the one and only Toji Fushiguro. Of course we get the context of Ghetto's ideal talking about the true utopia of society will be eliminating all non-sorcerers and keeping those who can manipulate cursed energy. I certainly feel like anime only folks will take to the manga after this movie. There is a lot of connections being made but you can only understand the full extent of it if you read and catch on up. One thing for certain is that if the Shibuya incident holds up to this quality the anime community is going to be in for a shock. The highlight of the movie of course being the final act with the night parade of 100 demons. Putting between both Shinjuku and Kyoto, this is when Mappa of course did what they do best and put on an action spectacle taking across multiple instances. We had Gojo beating the daylight out of Miguel which was my personal favorite because I'm a sucker for hand to hand combat. Mei Mei going absolutely ham with her weapon in a stylish slash fest. The Kyoto Jujutsu High kids getting the movie inclusion showcasing some of their fights and even getting to see Nanami's consecutive black flash record as mentioned during season 1. Again all with pure top notch quality, my crowd was hype on more multiple occasions. The Yuta vs Ghetto fight without a doubt blew me away. The movie really continues to show just how detailed JJK's fighting choreography is and he keeps on giving. All the weapon combat and elimination of curses was more than excellent. The final act really showed just how tapped Yuta really is when the situation is on the fence and it's no wonder that Gojo left him in Yuji's care for in the event shit goes horribly wrong. The Black Flash and This Is Pure Love scene both done justice with a very explosive ending that really took the manga and elevated it even further. The most emotional part of the movie, without a doubt one of my favorites as well, is that fateful goodbye to Rika. Seriously, everything Rika and Yuta really made you feel for the kids. What started out as innocent child love grew into something
something much more beyond than either of them could have expected it to be. Coincidentally, the JJK chapters showcasing the current Rika and the manga and the movie Rika being two different Rikas with two different specifications behind them, the timing being absolutely perfect for it all. What I think may confuse anime onlys is going to for sure be of course the elimination of Ghetto in this movie because of course we all know his body is still in use in the anime. If there is any time to go read the manga, it certainly is right now. One thing to note at the end of the movie is of course the post credits with Gojo going to see Yuta who's hanging out with Miguel. Slight appearance change fitting that manga look and of course it's a nod in the post Shibuya incident direction. When it comes to my wants going forward, I really think season 2 should just be the Star Plasma Vessel arc giving the manga more time to pull ahead post Shibuya and hopefully the time between seasons won't be so bad. Overall, I enjoyed this movie greatly. I don't think volume 0 is something that could have been messed up in the slightest and it's evident that Studio Mappa understood the assignment so props to all the staff who worked tirelessly on this movie. With that, it's going to bring me to the end of this short movie review. If you haven't seen this movie, then do yourself a favor and treat yourself this weekend because this is something you need to see in theaters first. And as always, make sure to leave your comments down below with your thoughts and ideas about the entire movie. Thank you for watching, stay safe out there, and I will catch you guys in the next video.